Well, also, let's go to Saeed uh, Arekat, who's a reporter with the newspaper, El Quds Daily, and is an adjunct professor at the American University. He joins us live from Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for uh, speaking to us. Now, the U.S. says it's uh, concerned. It also has called for a de-escalation. But in that same breath, we've heard from the U.S. State Department that says we're ready to defend our allies and partners in the region against any escalation. Now, much of the American stance throughout this whole war seems to be, at the very least, confusing and contradictory. Yes, thank you for having me. I don't think it is confusing or contradictory. The U.S. position is very clearly is on the side of Israel. Uh, Israel could not have possibly uh, waged such a, a strike without uh, American green light. After all, these are American airplanes, uh, American weapons, the, the health stock, the Hellfire missiles, and so on that um, the F-35 is equipped with. They're all American. Um, and we know that the um, uh, Secretary of Defense, uh, Mr. Lloyd Austin, has been in contact with his Israeli counterpart almost on a daily basis. So, uh, you know, I mean, to, to, for, for the United States to say we are really concerned, of course they are concerned. They don't want to see this go out of hand. but. When they talk about the escalation, uh, keep in mind that the escalation means that Israel can strike, but the others cannot respond. That is exactly what the United States means. Mm. And uh, nearly a year now, and the U.S. has uh, neither managed uh, so far to secure that ceasefire deal or even uh, prevent uh, all escalations. Joe Biden earlier saying that we are still pushing hard. Well, is it? Mm. And has the U.S. failed so far? Of course, because, uh, you know, as we recall, back on May 31, uh, President Biden uh, issued a, uh, gave a speech in which he outlined a ceasefire proposal, and uh, he, he called it at the time an Israeli proposal that they approved, uh, uh, Hamas agreed to it. You know, a few days later, we, we saw that the United States pushed for a UN resolution uh, for calling for the ceasefire, and they did. But then we see the U.S., uh, we saw the U.S. backtrack completely because um, Mr. Netanyahu did not agree to it. So this has been the American position all along. I don't, I don't believe that the U.S. is pushing hard enough for a ceasefire. I mean, in this partnership, it's the Americans who are the senior partner. They're the ones that supply the weapons, uh, supply the green light, supply the protection at the U.N., you know. Uh, so uh, to answer your question, or the short answer to your question, I don't believe that the United States has been pushing sincerely enough or strong enough. Yeah, and of course they had the um, UN General Assembly adopt uh, a non-binding draft uh, recently. Yes. Uh, but Israel says it doesn't want war with Lebanon, uh, Lebanon, and the rhetoric in Israel is that it seems to be escalating to de-escalate. Well, at least that's uh, what they're saying mm. at the moment. Now, how much of this really is about pushing back Hezbollah from that border to achieve its fourth uh, goal, which it recently announced, which is to allow uh, those on the northern border to return uh, back home? And how much of this is really more about internal politics with a prime minister that is being accused by thousands of protesters, as well as family members of those uh, being held captive, uh, of trying to stay in power and appease those far-right voices like Itamar Ben-Gvir, uh, Bezdal Smotrich, uh, to actually go into Lebanon uh, and uh, uh, occupy that southern part? Well, I mean, it's uh, it escalate to de-escalate. That's, uh, that's the ultimate double speak, uh, really. Uh, but you're right. I mean, uh, Netanyahu is catering to his right-wing constituency. Uh, there's uh, a great deal of support for uh, operations against Hezbollah uh, in Lebanon. Uh, but the talk of you know, reoccupying Lebanon uh, is really it's foolhardy because we have tried that before. I mean, Israel had occupied Lebanon for a very long time, and it was pushed out of it uh, in 2000, largely by the resistance of uh, Hezbollah, the Hezbollah movement. So uh, this has been uh, tried. So he's trying to cater to to the you know to, to his um, uh, group, his right wing coalitions, and so on, because uh, quite honestly, they have failed in Gaza. He stated three goals. Uh, to decapitate uh, Hamas, to free the hostages uh, by force, and to uh, change the regime in Gaza. And he's failed in all three. Now, they added uh, another dimension to this war, which is, you know, putting people back to uh, resettling them back in their villages and homes and towns uh, and so on. And that is not likely to do it, because, you know, while there has not been a very strong response from Hezbollah mm -hmm. today, uh, but at least by 
so what some claim around this town. Uh, but we will definitely see an escalation on the part of Hezbollah in the next few days. So we're likely to see more people, more Israelis, fleeing their homes and towns, going deeper into Israel. Yeah, absolutely. And even within Israel, some people have criticized uh, Netanyahu uh, for um, not being able to achieve those goals, as you said, and using uh, the northern border as a distraction. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Saeed Arakat, who's a reporter of the newspaper El Quds Daily, who is joining there, us there from Washington, D.C. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.